Hey guys, so some big things happened today, uh, and we got our first look at AMD's new chipset, Ryzen, and this is their new competitor, big competitor to Intel. Now, if you've been following the, C the computer world at all, CPU world, you'll know AMD has kind of had a rough go of it with Intel. Intel pretty much beats AMD most times across the board, uses less power, produces less heat, is just better overall for enthusiasts. Well, it looks like AMD decided uh, it was about time they released some processors that would actually make Intel sweat. And in this case, it looks like they're actually leaving them in the dust pretty badly. And even if you're not into like computers or anything like that, this is a good, this is great because it will create competition. So if there's ever a time where you decide you want to build a computer for games, or maybe you want to do video editing or, or recording, this, this is great because this will create competition, heavy competition once I show you guys this stuff. And it's going to produce cheaper chips that run very fast. So let's get right into it. This is their entire presentation that they showed us. And I'll, I'll kind of touch on all the all the things that they talked about. And we can kind of go from there. So the first thing to talk about is they have three different lines they're going to release. They're going to call them Ryzen and then basically a number to, to subclass them all in. In this case, they released... They're talking about their, their best set right now, which is Ryzen 7. That's like their enthusiast grade stuff. So if you look at like Intel's processor, this would be stuff that would compete with their i7 class. They're also going to do a Ryzen 5 and then I believe a Ryzen 3 as well to compete with what would probably be honestly the i5s and then the i3s as we go forward. I think they released or at least released information about the newer chips like these because the i7s are priced so high, they knew they could get in there and really, really punch Intel with the gut with these these prices, these prices are unbelievable. So you're gonna see a, a bunch of numbers here in front of you. I'll go down them very quickly with you. To start, they have the Ryzen, R, the Ryzen 7 1800X, they have the Ryzen 7 1700X, and then just the Ryzen 7 1700. Now, each one of those has eight cores and then two threads per core, giving it 16 threads. Those would be heavily utilized in encoding, converting video, doing video editing, uh, music editing, basically anything like that that is CPU intensive, it would be used for. Now, these chips would probably not be ideal to use for gaming. You really just wouldn't need all of those threads and cores. You'd probably be fine with a quad core, like an i5 or whatever they do next for the Ryzen 5s. You'd probably be fine with there in gaming. This is definitely geared more towards enthusiasts who have to do some serious computations on their computer. The great thing here is they were ready with their boost clock stuff. It, at CES, when they were showing these off, they were not ready. Boost clock was just not a thing for them yet. It wasn't ready, so none of them boosted up. These do, though, and what that means is if it, if it knows it has adequate cooling it will then boost up while certain tasks are hap happening so make sure you have good cooling for these so they don't try to throttle but as long as everything's good the ryzen or uh, the ryzen 7 1800x can jump up to 4 gigahertz the 1700x can jump up to 3.8 gigahertz with the 1700 topping out at 3.7 gigahertz tdp has always been very uh bad for amd for the most part they've usually been well over 100 and created a lot of heat and power draw in this case though they managed to not only increase performance drastically but they've also decreased tdp through so it won't pull as much power which of course won't create as much heat in this case their their strongest chip here at 1800x only pulls 95 watts which is amazing since the 6900k i know pulls right around 120 to 125 uh watts for this tdp next to that 1700x also 95 watts and then the 1700 is only 65 watts which to me is amazing that's that's really good for an eight core 16 thread three gigahertz processor that's really good and then of course the big thing is the price if you look down from there the 1800x is 499 1700x 399 and the 1700 is 329 now of course you might be saying wow that doesn't sound very cheap at all well let's put that in perspective considering the 1800x would be compared to the i7 6900k which currently retails for just over a thousand dollars most places yes you heard that right the 6900k is retailing right now for just over a thousand dollars i actually just checked this on ebay and on amazon and for the most part it does sit right around there now the other two seem to be in competition with the 6800k and even the 7700k which are priced a little more reasonably for example the 6800k i was able to find for just over 400 dollars, and the 7700k i could find right around 350 to 370 so while that's not jumping out like crazy for this chart for the price difference, it's still a price difference. And according to their benchmarks, the price is better and their performance is better too. So I want to start this by saying these benchmarks that they gave us are of course controlled by AMD. These are not uh, benchmarks that regular people or reviewers are getting, which they'll do 
all kinds of stuff. They'll play around with it. It'll be in a much more neutral setting. This, of course, is AMD probably putting their Ryzen chips in a much better position to compete next to the i7. So keep that in mind that we are looking at AMD's benchmarks for AMD processors uh, and just keep an eye out for the actual benchmarks that people find in the real world. So here we go. This is These are all slides that they presented at their big, uh, their big conference that they just had. They have the Ryzen 7 1700 having Cinebench, which Cinebench, if you guys don't know, is a benchmark that it, it basically shows how well a processor will work when it comes to encoding video, or if you want to get something for video editing, you would check the Cinebench score, to be honest. That just shows you how much brute force power a processor has to do things with video. And to get started, they showed us the Ryzen 7 1700 against the i7-7700K, and you can see how much of a difference it is. It is a 46% difference between the two. Now, of course, the, the Ryzen 7 1700 has quite a few threads there at 16, whereas the i7-7700K has uh, less threads than that. It actually has eight threads. So that is a big deal, obviously, and that's why you see such a massive jump between the two. From there, you'll see they went ahead and paired the 1700X with the 6800K. 6800K has 12 threads, whereas the 1700X, of course, has those 16 threads. That, of course, is why it was probably a difference is because it had more threads. Of course, though, it is a newer processor, so it's gonna probably run better as well. But again, this is AMD versus Intel. This is usually not the case. Intel has been making small steps, so you can actually even see that because they also compare that same 1700X versus the $1,000 processor in the 6900K, and it is very close to matching it, but actually beats it by about 4%. And here we go, guys. These are two big, big processors going against each other. Here you have the 7 1800X versus the 6900K, you'll see that the 1800X actually beats the 6900K by 9%. The single thread is exactly the same, which is amazing because, again, usually AMD gets beat up pretty bad by Intel and single thread applications, but not here from what I can tell. This is it right here. This is their big chip going up against Intel's big 6900K chip, and the 1800X is half the price. It's literally 50% less in terms of pricing. So AMD, seems to have a chip that is amazingly powerful compared to Intel stuff and is significantly cheaper. So AMD is doing great things here because guess what? Intel is going to look at this and say, well, we got to either make our chip way, way stronger or we have to actually match AMD with their pricing. So you're going to see whatever Intel decides to come out with next being much more affordable than their typical enthusiast stuff or we'll all just buy AMD for the most part because it's less on the TDP, it's better benchmarks, and there's more threads to it, so why wouldn't we just get that one? Now, I will say though, these are definitely what they would call prosumer chips. They are geared completely towards people who are looking to, like I said, video edit or do heavy computation work on their computer because these chips, from what I can tell, don't even come with integrated graphics at all. So you need a video card paired with these. You can't just get the chip and then get video out. You need to get a video card of some kind, which if you're getting into intensive, uh, intensive editing for video, you would get a video card of some kind anyway, just to help out with that. So Really, it's not a big deal. If you're buying that kind of chip and you're spending four to $500 on a chip, you're probably going to buy at least a mid-range video card for video editing as well. And the crazy thing is you can actually go pre-order it today. Like it, the chips are out for pre-order today and they're going to launch March 2nd. So there'll be a March 2nd launch and you should be able to go to retail stores and just buy them if you have like a micro center near you. I'm trying to think of anywhere else that would sell these chips. Maybe you guys know, maybe like Fry's Electronics out in the West Coast sells them. Or of course you can just go on Amazon or Newegg or any of those places and just buy the chip. But I I was shocked when I saw these benchmarks, mostly because Intel has reigned supreme for so long at this point. Now, again, I see why they came to the table with the top end enthusiast grade chips first because they had that big trump card with their big chip being $500 as opposed to $1,000 and having better performance overall. So that makes sense. I'll be more curious to see how their gaming chips come out and how they are with their, probably their Ryzen 5. I assume that will be their gaming level for people that will then try to match the i5s. Of course, at that point, I think the returns will be a little less, obviously diminishing returns across the board because they will have to increase their single thread performance over their multi-thread performance to match for things like games that mostly only take advantage of two to four cores at a time. But yeah, guys, this is it. If you are thinking about building a computer, I would wait a little bit, see what these Ryzen 5 Five chips are. I, we don't know when they're coming out. We just know it's going to be sometime later on this year or wait for Intel's price drops because that's 
probably going to happen. I mean, they have to match this or come out with something that is comparable in terms of price. The 7700K from what you could tell was uh, beaten up pretty good here by AMD's new processors that will be out in a week and a half at this point. So if you're thinking about buy buying and building a computer, wait at least a month or so to see what happens with Intel's chips. Now, if you're doing it for gaming, I don't think Intel's gaming chips like the i5s or below will drop in price because there's still no real competition from AMD on that market. But when we see the Ryzen 5, you will probably see price drops from Intel or at least revamped chips coming out next generation that will be much fairly priced, I want to say. And that's it for now, guys. Let me know what you think about the new Ryzen 7 lineup down in the comments below. Let me know if you're thinking about building a computer or you're thinking about upgrading because apparently there's over 80 new motherboards coming out with this socket available uh, down the line as well at the probably a little after launch they were saying tons of motherboards are going to start showing up that will support this as well I think now there's not many but this paired with DDR4 and a good video card seems to be a good gaming alternative as well might be a little pricey like I said the, our, the Ryzen 5 might be better chips for that but let me know what you guys think about this lineup I'm pretty happy to see that Intel is now behind the curve because when you're behind the curve they need to get they need to get on their engineers and get this figured out now because AMD is not supposed to be leading Intel. Intel is supposed to be leading AMD. So this is going to be an interesting couple of months to see what Intel's response is. But let me know what you guys think down below. I will see you next time.